Don't be fooled by the rocks that I've got. I'm just, I'm just Kirsty from the block. <laughs> More on that story later. <laughs> the government this week was accused of a fudge with its new hunting bill. I'm joined now by the Prime Minister. There has been no fudge, Kirsty. Furious Greenwellies, angry barber jacket, get off my land teeth. <laughs> We simply decided against an outright ban on hunting with hounds in favour of a compromise proposal. Indeed. Rather than banning the fox hunt, we are banning bargain hunt. <laughs> the cruelty on display is simply abhorrent, as can be seen from this shocking video smuggled out of BBC One. This is gone fast. Hello, what and am I... welcome to Bargain Hunt with me, David Dickinson, the only person who went to see the Austin Powers movies for the fashion tips. Now, I think today we're going to run a bargain hunter to ground. It is terrible to see these poor damn bargain hunters being set upon by baying antique dealers who force the most horrendous porcelain ducks, reclining lady figurines and novelty hat stands on them. People say it is harmless fun watching them suffer so terribly when all of this tat finally comes to auction, but I say it is barbaric. Desperate to mobilise opposition to an outright ban, a massive rally organised by the Pro Bargain Hunt Alliance will take place this weekend in central London. <laughs> We have one of the rally organisers on the line. Now, what the government seems to have forgotten <laughs> is the terrible knock-on effect any ban would have on businesses. Without my harmless activities, countless tanning salons and probably thousands of hairspray manufacturers would be driven out of business. Many high-profile opponents to an outright bargain hunt ban have now started to come forward. Bargain hunting is a noble British tradition. Flogging off dodgy antiques to unsuspecting mugs has, for countless generations, been a way of life for my family and untold numbers of butlers here at the palace. Bargaining hunting is part of the language. I've lost count of the number of times I've looked at Edward and thought, hmm, could be a duffer. <laughs> Oh, hello there. Hello. And thank you for joining one on Her Majesty the Queen's QVC value shopping channel. <laughs> we have an extraordinary array of gifts exclusively available to members of the royal household because we can't be asked paying them proper wages. They can be yours on a nod and a wink because we royals get more free gifts than I've insulted foreigners. First is this beautiful diamond-encrusted antique tiara. Now, Philip, I believe this is one of yours. Is this right, Liz? Uh, it was given to me by uh, an Arab. Uh, so, as you can imagine, I've uh, no desire to keep the bloody thing whatsoever. Now, in the shops, this would set you back £20,000. But you can have it for the bargain price of sod all. Provided you're one of those peasants who cleans our toilets, brushes Charles' teeth, or satisfies Edward's every demand. The tiara is elegantly presented in this carrier bag, like so. And Liz, that makes it perfect for carting around to a society jewellers so you can flog the tiara for more dosh than Harry spends on hashish. <laughs> Join us after the break for more exciting offers, like this. A fully self-collapsing trial. This new Windsor model allows a £2 million court case to fold to virtually nothing in seconds. What a bargain. Cheap as chips. I think what's important about people is what's on the inside, which is why I think it's absolutely frightful that in our society people are persecuted just because of the colour of their skin. I mean, take me, I'm a normal, lovely person, but I face prejudice every day just because I'm orange. TV presenters all across the country are asking themselves, is it because I is orange? Now, let me tell you something. I was repeatedly bullied at school. They treated me no better than a dog or a bargain hunt contestant. Was it because I was orange? Or was it because I was just generally an annoying tit? <laughs> orange boy! <laughs> but like so many other children, I found there was one way of deflecting the bullies. I'd say an eighter, possibly a niner. It has been very good, but I just say that adds to no value. And that could be one day really triangle. I'd say it's a Bobby Dazzler. Ho ho! Cheap as chip. <laughs> Some of the things I get called as an orange person are unbelievable. I mean, I can laugh now, but um, actually at the time it's very, very upsetting to be called names like Fanta. Orangutan. 
Lucas Aid. Oompa Loompa. But in the end, all we want is for people of all colours to be lovely and at peace with each other. Tangerine and ivory live together in perfect harmony side by side on my piano. These people are fighting for their right, their right to significantly increase their chances of getting skin cancer just so they can look like Spaniards. And together they believe the future's bright, the future's orange. <laughs> Welcome to Tarrant on TV, the show that you thought I couldn't be asked to do any more. Once again, we'll be looking at the wacky world of TV across the world and proving that they really do do things differently abroad. Take a look at this curiously doom-laden offering from our French cousins. Bonjour et bienvenue à 999 Rescue d'Emergency avec moi, Michel Burke. Où est la plume de ma tante? Tu se celle, oui, plus tard. Vendredi était un jour ordinaire pour Antoine de Cohn. Mais le jeu termine dans la tragédie. Il est tombé dans un abandoned quarry. Bouf! Quel tit! laws. Next up is a decidedly bizarre but popular program from Germany which toys with our emotions in a faintly sadistic way. Guten Tag. And the Cummins and Rolf's animal cranken house. Do you remember the lovely Hunt Rover? Es ist, sie sie sagen, in England. Bad news. It was so feeble, so mangy, um so machen durch den Nacht. This is the kind of sad. We end today with a program from across the pond whose inexplicable popularity proves that, unlike the more discerning viewers over here, those Yanks really will watch anything. Hi, I'm Dave Dickinson, the palest man on American network TV, and you're watching. Bargain quest. Now, I've given our teams the laughably small sum of $200,000. Will my homies come back with a Bob Dazzler or just a goddamn heap of ass? Let's hope it's a bargain. Ho oh, ho! Cheap as French fries! It's the most eagerly awaited blockbuster of the summer. The story of a man whose genetic experiment turns him into a terrifying and destructive monster. Meet Ian Duncan Smith. My entire life, my political views have seemed banal and irrelevant. But now, by altering my genetic makeup, I shall make myself vote winningly enthusiastic. <laughs> but Ian Duncan Smith will tragically overestimate the correct dosage of enthusiasm. Instead of becoming a likable and popular politician, he will turn into an appalling and grotesque freak. He will become... <laughs> the incredible Duke. Conservative taxation! Oh, it's cheap as chips! <laughs> the Duke has the enthusiasm of ten grown men, leading him to uncontrollable bouts of violent glee. <laughs> Mm, mm, European Union! Oh, sounds like a duffer! Mm, what about this, this lovely policy on tuition fees? Mm, that's a real Bobby Vogue, that's like. Hey! Oh, oh, viewers, vote! Vote and serve! Vote and serve! Conservative! Oh. Ian. Oliver Letwin's here to discuss local council reform. I know how that subject usually perks you up. Don't make me enthusiastic. You wouldn't like me when I'm enthusiastic. 